a website called All About the Tea. It's called All About the Tea that during the fight. Teacups, today we have a very special guest joining us. She's a reality star, entrepreneur, wife, mother, all around fabulous woman, married to medicine star, Lisa Nicole Cloud. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lisa. You are back. And thank you, Monica, for inviting me. I'm excited to come and sip some tea with you today. Thank you. Thank you. And Myself and on behalf of the teacups, we are so happy to have you today because you are back, girl, and you are stirring up a lot of waves from the things I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. What I do know is that when I decided to come back, I decided to come back and not take anyone's shit. So, mm -hmm. if you want to call that stirring, stirring up the waves, then so be it. But I'm just not going to let certain people get away with the bullying that they always have. Ooh, okay, well, we're going to get into that. Bullying, you say. First first and foremost, you look amazing. Okay, you. you're aging backwards. I don't know what you're doing, but you look flawless. You know, oh, keep it up. You're so sweet. Thank you. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm honest. I'm honest. So you're not just a reality star, Lisa. You are an entrepreneur, boss lady, booked and busy. Booked and busy. Yes, thank you. Yes, I do. I um, I was already very successful in business before I came to TV, and I think it was the lifestyle that my businesses had afforded me that made me, you know, a great person and a great personality for TV. But I have a number of companies. You know, I have the clothing line, which you guys saw a little bit of on the show. Not as much as I would have liked people to see, but you know, I'm not one of those designers that did it for a season storyline. You know, I've had my clothing line for seven years and we've shown all over the world from, you know, New York to LA to Miami in the US. I've shown in France and Cannes, Bermuda, se several island fashion, you know, festivals. So, you know, um, we have a very successful uh, business with the clothing line. And I have a showroom that I would love for anybody that's in Atlanta to come and visit us. Um, it's called the Boss Showroom. It's in Atlanta and Norcross. It's 6,000 square feet of a oasis for women. So if you need to get away and you want to shop or you want a facial or a massage, or, I mean, we do it all at my showroom because I believe every woman should be two things classy and fabulous and we should all treat ourselves like the queens that we are so i just kind of created that space with my showroom in atlanta and yeah very nice yep. Speaking of fashion you designed giselle bryan's housewives of potomac reunion gown didn't yeah you? there's a backstory to that dress too okay I'll start with you um Patel, uh, Giselle actually is just, she's very beautiful. And she had another gown that was designed for her by another designer. And when the dress arrived, it was just a catastrophe. She said she could not wear it. So literally two days before she had to film, she called me and said, Lisa, can you help me out? So basically, I don't want to ever leave a friend hanging. I said, okay. And you know, she kind of told me the colors that she wanted or that had been selected for the reunion. So literally in two days, I had to go and source fabric. And yellow is a very unique color because it doesn't look good on all skin types, you know. So you got to get the right shade of yellow. And she didn't want just an average dress. So we wanted to give a little extra with the embellishment so that she really sparkled at, on the on stage. But nonetheless... It wasn't like I had an opportunity to fit her perfectly. Um, these were her measurements that she sent to me. And, you know, we created. And most gowns, when you're doing a custom gown, you do the gown. And then you have to do a fitting um, to make sure it fits perfectly everywhere. And we didn't have that luxury. And we didn't have a whole lot of time to just design something just like right for the top amazing. So for what I had time to do two days, I think Giselle looked beautiful. Um, 
And I think that everybody's going to always have their opinion. You know, every dress that you wear, that I wear, everybody is not going to like. And I think that um, she got a lot of fans that loved her. And then she got a lot of people that hated on her about the dress. But, you know, fashion is art. And you are an expression. It's an expression of the person who's wearing it. So, you know, you don't want to just fit in. You want to stand out and make some noise. Absolutely. If, and having only two days, two days. to get that down, kudos to you. Two because days. You the and best then, you could in a short period of time. Yeah, and so we designed the gown. We stoned the gown. And then because I like to provide excellent service to my clients, I literally flew to her because FedEx couldn't get it to her in time because I missed the 6 o'clock cutoff. So I literally got on a plane, flew to her, adjusted what we could and then flew back to Atlanta while she went and filmed her reunion. Now, if that's not dedication, I don't know what is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, listen, kudos to you for that. You did the best you could in a very short uh, amount of time. And, uh, the dress was seen everywhere because that real housewives of Potomac reunion was so Ooh, woo, woo, Okay. Right here, that Ooh, was the tea, the binder that listen, <laughs> my job was like the on the floor on mm -hmm. the floor from the beginning to the end of the reading mm -hmm. so they did their jobs they were there to keep us entertained and to keep us coming back and those ladies did their thing last season so hats off to them absolutely they showed up and showed out okay let's get to the meat and the potatoes of this miss lisa nicole cloud what made you decide to return to Mary to Medicine? Because at the time of your departure, at the end of season four, your marriage and reputation was attacked by some of your co-stars. Yeah. When I left that show, it was so toxic. You know, I mean, the only real ally I had was Mariah, but everybody else had kind of chosen a side. And that's kind of what happens in reality TV. Unfortunately, you know, you choose a side. Um, but when the reality TV platform was no longer serving me and it was starting to have an impact on myself, my mind space, my husband, my family, that's when I was like, it's not worth it to me. And I needed a break. I stepped away and... I think it was great that I did it because when I tell you when they talk about reality TV hurting marriages it can I'm not blaming it on reality TV it's just that it puts a microscope on issues and sometimes it magnifies issues um, bigger than they necessarily are mm -hmm. but in my case you know we did have some communication issues and um, my husband felt very much um, that, that, that he'd really been, I mean, not that he wasn't making some mistakes, because he definitely was out there doing some craziness, you know, but it got, he really got the short end of the stick. I mean, he really, really, he's a good guy, but they, they made him look like horrible you know mm -hmm. they it's, sure did it's like it's not like he was doing things that other people aren't doing like going to the strip club right mm -hmm. everybody goes to the strip club but you know the way they painted him like he was a sleazy guy always in the strip clubs all the time that's not how it was you know he went with for homecoming with some old college friends you know but nonetheless it got magnified and it looked like he was all cheesy and after the fact, let me just drop this little tea. After the fact of that season, I ran into the stripper that confronted me. Oh, okay. I was actually going in a restaurant and she was coming out. And she was like, she did like this. She felt so bad. And I was like, Susan, I, I've been wanting to reach out to you and just let you know your husband did come into Sheeta a couple of times, but he's not like a regular. And he wasn't like going in the back and doing all that craziness. But one of your castmates, her husband, and it's not a castmate that's on anymore, but her husband was like the plastic surgeon that took care of a lot of those girls. And, you know, she needed some tea. And so she kind of like set that up. 
And she confirmed that was Jill. I'm not she she set that up. Oh, okay. Because I was just about to say Jill Connors. Yeah. The stripper confirmed it that they wanted, you know, some drama in that scene mm -hmm. and they were gonna confront me. Because the truth of the matter is I had no idea that he'd been in the strip club. So that was a problem in and of itself, but you know, that reaction that you saw on TV mm -hmm. was real and raw. I was like, mm. you take that back. My husband has not been in this strip club. And in fact, he mm -hmm. had, you could have been mm -hmm. a fly on the wall that night. When mm -hmm. I was home, I mean. Oh my goodness, I, I can only imagine. This way, yeah. But you know, it, and that's the, that goes back to the communication that I talk about. You know, mm -hmm. marriages, you have to be open to communicate how you really feel. And if you're holding anything in, it, it's going to eventually reach a tipping point and it's going to come out in ways that you don't really want it to come out. Absolutely. So you're saying that it did somewhat impact your marriage. Yeah, it impacted. Like after I left the show, my husband and I, we separated. Oh. A lot of people don't know that. We separated and I was on my way to the divorce table. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and. You know, had it not been that um, I'm a very, very, I'm very loyal and I'm very committed when I do stuff. And marriage, you know, I, I grew up in a single parent home. And so one of the things that I wanted was to make sure I could bring my kids and raise my kids in a home with two loving parents. That was very important to me. And so, um, you know, that was a part of the factor of me deciding to try to figure out how to work it out. Um, the fact that he was willing and wanting to work it out and go get counseling, mm -hmm. you know, very humble and in his apologies for the th things that he had done that had messed up. Um, and it wasn't like he was out there like, you know, sleeping around that I have any proof of. I just inappropriate things on the Internet, talking to people, you know, people bumping in people's DMs, that kind of stuff. And I just confronted him and I'm like, look, you can do that if you want to, but you can't do that and stay with me you gotta make a choice and so um so that's kind of how it went down we went through counseling and we worked it out you know marriage is not something that you can take lightly i believe marriage is a covenant and covenants are not meant to be broken and so if there's any way to preserve your marriage then you know be willing to do the work to try to make it work Good for you. I'm glad you guys were able to work it out because you have kids, you have a beautiful family, and you're business partners too. There's a lot more at stake than just, you know, a just, piece of, you know marriage. Yeah. Absolutely. You build a life together and then you, you know, it just, it's not as simple as saying goodbye, I'm done, in my opinion. Some people, that might be their, you know, the way they operate, but... I believe anything worth having is going to require some work and you Definitely. just got to be willing to do the work if both parties want to do the work. And yes. so that's how we, we managed to stay together. And, and honestly, you know, when we sign up to do reality TV, it's the ladies that are signing up to do it. You know, the husbands aren't in a contract, right? In many of these shows, the husbands don't even get paid. So there was some resentment in like the reputational damage that happened as a result of the show. So when I tell you I needed to step away, I needed to step away. And not only that, the season that I left right after that season, I ended up getting blood clots and oh. being in the hospital. And I think it was a result of just all the toxic stress that was yes. I was putting on myself being a part of the show. And at that time... You know, I don't stay in toxic environments. If an environment is not positive and productive, then I don't want to be a part of it. So sometimes it does you a good to just walk away and step away and regroup and figure out whether or not you want to come back. And I was asked to come and film many times um, after I left, but I just wasn't in a place where I was ready or wanted to. But Toya did a really great job i don't know if you guys remember our last season but at the reunion she was like you know lisa when you and i have beef, let's just keep it to you and i let's leave our husbands out of it right. that's the real like sincere statement that she made and she did she stayed in touch with me after the season um and we continued to communicate and then you know, she was like why don't you come and hang out with us and you know we're gonna be filming just just come hang out lisa yeah. 
<laughs> then I said, okay. And, you know, after that, that was I, it. That was it. I, next thing I knew, I was asked to come back and be a friend, and I was filming the whole season. Back in the fold. Okay, well, that's good to know that Toya was the one that pulled you back into this. You mentioned Jill Connors, and I just want to touch on that real quick. But wasn't she arrested for beating up her husband for because she was cheating on him? Girl, karma is not nice, right? Family and marriages is something you do not mess with. And Absolutely. um and you know, she she tried it and look what ended up happening. It like boomeranged on her and came right back to her. Um and unfortunately, you know, her situation didn't end so well because I think she and her husband divorced um, and she went through, you know, some, some pretty traumatic emotional stuff. And, you know, I pray for her and I wish her all the best, but I do believe that karma is real. Karma is definitely real. And um, I hope she learned from that lesson and she's, you know, in a better headspace because that was foul. That was really, really foul. Mm -hmm. All right, girl. Moving on into season eight of Married to Medicine, I'm hearing, you know, I got all the tea. That's all about you me. got all the tea, girl. I'm watching these stories you dropping, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> they don't call me all about the tea for nothing. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing the girls are coming for you, specifically Heavenly. And what I'm hearing is she's bullying you. Uh, you and her are in some type of feud over mobile COVID testing units. <laughs> Lisa, can you break it down for me? Oh, heavenly, heavenly, heavenly. Uh, heavenly, I wouldn't say, shh. first of all, I wouldn't say all the girls are coming for me because that's okay. not true at all. I have a good relationship with pretty much all of the ladies, maybe minus one or two, right? Mm -hmm. But Heavenly is the one that has not been very welcoming of my return. And um, I don't think that we were ever in competition because I don't compete against Heavenly. Let's be for real, okay? Um, but I will say that Heavenly has a way of trying to copy everybody. She doesn't really know what she wants to be when she grows up, right? One minute, she's a relationship expert. The next minute, she's a, you know, a marriage guru, right? I remember a season where she was talking to all of us about our marriage. Then she has a dating app. And then she's a realist. I mean, she, I hear she's selling hair now. I mean, she just kind of still trying to figure out what she wants to be. And so um, I just found, you know, we're in a pandemic. So obviously we need all, we needed all the COVID testing we could get. Right. And, and I, I wouldn't say that we should be arguing about COVID testing, but I will say that I have been doing COVID testing since the pandemic hit. My, I own a diagnostic laboratory, so we actually have a CLIA and we run COVID testing. And so we've been out in the community from day one um, trying to make a difference in service under smart community. And right around the time that the camera started rolling is when all of a sudden you see the Heavenlies now. He and Dr. Freeman are doing COVID testing. And I'm not saying they didn't want to make a difference. I'm just saying I don't know if it was for the camera or if it was really they wanted to do it to, to, to be a, of service to the community. So that's the arguments that we had or discussions that maybe people are referring to. Because um, I don't think they're still doing it. I think once the cameras wrap, that was a wrap of the fleet of mobile RVs that were testing. Wow. Well, that was a mouthful. Well, that was some tea. Okay. That was the truth. That's all. Don't call it. If they, I mean, I'm just being honest. Yeah. I mean, when's yeah. the last time they did a COVID testing site? Now, don't get me wrong. I want to just say this. Dr. Damon is an amazing doctor i really think that damon is a good guy but i think that the concept of you know being out in the trenches testing people um that's some real work you know we we were out there and as a matter of fact what she tried to do this season to try to discredit me is say that i did bad business because people got had delays getting their results well the reality is Every lab was backlogged, you know, I mean, Quest and LabCorp were backlogged. We were in the thick of a pandemic 
And we were doing like, I mean, when that backlog happened for us, we did like 8,000 tests in like two weeks because we were trying to make a difference and help as many people as we could help. And instead of her like knowing that that was just the reality of a pandemic, she tried to spin it like, well, you, you're you shady and your lab doesn't do good business. And, um, you know, she just, she's just not, not good. You know, that could have, as a doctor, you know, your reputation is all you have. As a business person and owning a clinic, that's your business professional reputation. And, you know, we should not be going for each other's livelihood. We always talk about stay away from family, stay away from our businesses. If anybody said anything bad about any doctor they would have grounds to be upset because that's their livelihood outside of this show but heavenly doesn't think that that applies to anybody that's not a doctor so she feels like she can go in and talk about people's businesses and it's just fair game and that's some bullshit listen i can understand your frustration because when it comes to reputation and you being a businesswoman that stuff is taken, it should be taken very seriously. Very. It has, uh, it has repercussions on your income, your revenue, and, and those sorts of things. And Heavenly had made a statement before this, uh, a few months ago, and she said you were affecting her money, and she don't play with her money. What Was, was she referring to this mobile COVID unit? I think possibly, you know. It's so funny, like our slogan was know your status or that was our hashtag that we put on all of our posts. Um, next thing I knew her hashtag was Georgia know your status, right? You know, that's mm -hmm. all the hashtags in the world. You gotta, you know, that's kind of suspect. And a lot of the sites that we were servicing, I noticed that all of a sudden she started reaching out to them to try to get them to be clients. And it's fine, we are in a capitalistic, free enterprise economy so competition is part of that but at the same time you know you're affecting my money when you talk crap about me right and you didn't just do it this year if you remember she tried to discredit my um my my speaking events my conferences she tried to compete against me in that conference space all for the sake of a storyline and that's just not cool it seems that she's always in some sort of competition with you. Some might agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I do feel like Heavenly is just a bully. She has to be arguing and fighting with somebody, right? Um, she also plays really good chess. So she tries to kind of bring people over to her side and be Team Heavenly. I mean, she does that game, that, that dance really well. But, um, you know, I, I don't care because I'm, I don't, Heavenly is no, no competition to me at all. You know, pretty much her mentors are people that I introduced her to. Um, and it's unfortunate because when Heavenly and I did connect to me at the time, it was a sincere friendship that I thought we were developing. So when she made the decision to kind of like split off and break off and create this controversy around the conference for the sake of a storyline that was kind of disappointing because i just didn't see it coming but i do believe when a person shows you who they are believe them the first time so she will never catch me like in my feelings ever again as it relates to that friendship that's unfortunate because you are inspirational in my mind. You're a boss lady. You're a businesswoman. You run several different businesses. She really could have developed a sincere friendship with you to learn from you. Because from my perspective, I see her doing so many different things. She's a dentist. She's selling here the mobile uh, COVID testing units. I noticed too. Uh, myself that it was a temporary thing it always seems like she's doing these temporary things and nothing's sticking right yeah i mean and that could be that she's just leveraging her platform so in leveraging her platform every season she's going to come up with some kind of business there's a lot of reality talent that does that i mean that's a business move you know but at the same time you got to find something and commit to it and stick with it so people take you serious in business. You know, every year you can't have 
a new hustle. That's true. That's true. I hope she gets it together because like I said, I mean, together you guys could be a force. You're both intelligent. Um, I also heard some rumblings that heavenly attacked your appearance. Is that true? Specifically your weight. No, you get all the tea. Goodness gracious. Yeah, I got my ears to the street down in Atlanta. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, so yeah, have, heavenly did say I was fat. She accused me of gaining a lot of weight and saying that, like, I had a belly and all that kind of stuff. And, and granted, we've been in COVID and I have picked up some pounds, but uh, you're talking about somebody that was 350 pounds and I have never been over 125 pounds in my life, even in my heaviest state. So... You know, fat shaming someone after all you've been through to try to get your weight where you want it to be. And I mean, I give it to Heavenly. She's looking much, much better, you know, than she's ever looked. But, you know, let's not get a big head and like forget what you once were. And at any point feel like you have the right to fat shame somebody. That's not shocking coming from Heavenly, but I'm disappointed because like you said, you know, she underwent various, she was very overweight and she underwent from what I've heard, various procedures to lose the weight. And then from that, she was able to get on the show. So for her to attack your weight and from what I'm seeing, you, you look far from overweight. Okay. You look amazing. And I've seen your photos on social media far from overweight. Um, it doesn't shock me that she went that low, but it saddens me. Listen, Quad read her the best, right? She said, don't be mad at me because you've undergone, and Quad listed it, lap band, lipo, bariatric, every type of surgery you could go through to lose weight for average results. Those were Quad's words, okay? Not my words, Quad's words. And so... And she, and she put it out on social media and people went in because she gave Heavenly it right back. Because Heavenly dishes it out but can't always take it back. And so, you know, I just think that it, it, there's no room for anybody to fat shame people. Even Everybody, from what I can tell, COVID has had an impact on everybody. I look at the television shows right now and I can see everybody has gained a little bit of weight, you know. And even off of television. You know, it, we've been in the house. We've been in the pandemic. We haven't had the opportunity to get out and do all the activities that we once did. And so we all may have picked up some pounds. But to, like, try to make somebody feel bad about it, to make yourself feel better, that's what a bully does. Absolutely. That is the quintessential definition of a bully. And I'm sorry you went through that. Because, again, as women, we need to support and uplift each yeah. other. Yeah. Absolutely. And on such an a impactful show like Married to Medicine, um, portraying black professional women, doctors and doctors' wives and entrepreneurs, it's to me uncalled for and a, a misuse of the platform it, it saddens me it is yeah. but here's what i can tell you about married to medicine that show truly does show the authentic ups and downs and trials and tribulations of friend circles you know um mm -hmm. and so it is authentically raw like you're gonna see that there are some of my castmates that are having some friendship struggles this season and you would never have expected it. But the show really does show you real friendships. And, you know, Heavenly, she you just don't know what you're going to get with her. One minute, she's nice and sweet. And then the next minute, she's like hellishly instead of heavenly, you know. So mm -hmm. you just don't know what you're going to get. And that's the date, most dangerous type of person to be in the cast with. Because you just, they'll, they'll do whatever they need to do to secure and keep their faith. Absolutely, absolutely. But you, you got her book read. You seem to know her down pet. And coming back to this show, I think you've armed yourself well, you know, and I think you, more than anyone, um, you're ready to go. Yeah, in the beginning of the season, before I came back, Heavenly was going in so bad on Toya. I mean, it was just 
ridiculous how disrespectful and how nasty she was being to Toya because she has to fight with somebody. Mm -hmm. So uh, once I came back, and of course she did not want me back, and she made it very known that she did not want me back, um, but she don't make the decisions at that camp. Mm -hmm. So um, she switched from like always fighting with Toya to fighting with me. You became her target. I became the target. But come on, baby, let's go. Because you and you do not scare Lisa Nicole. So let's go. You're a strong girl. I remember season four when you and Quad got into it. And at that moment is when I knew, don't mess with Lisa Nicole. <laughs> don't I don't mess, mess with anybody. I don't try to come for yeah. anybody. You know, mm -hmm. I try to just do me. Um, and But if you poke me and you push me, you will get Nikki. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deny it anymore. You know, when I was on before, I tried to like you know, try to like stay above the gutter and not go in the gutter too much and be nice and classy, but sometimes sometimes a bitch can take you there, you know. Oh, absolutely. When they go low, you need to go lower. You gotta meet some people where they're at. So right. I completely get that. Right. I want to talk about the other person that comes for you because you said one or two. We talked about Heavenly. Who's the other person? Surprisingly, the new girl. Oh. But not so surprisingly. Because, of course, when you're new, you're really trying to secure your spot. And you'll do anything to, um, you know make sure you come back the next season and I, I really kind of think that's the mindset that she was in because she was pretty much fighting with a lot of people you know to try to bring drama and you'll see that she was a bit cuckoo at times um cuckoo well, cuckoo right not and cuckoo girl cuckoo, 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 cuckoo cocoa puffs you'll see uh you know and if anybody you, you know, I'm not going to spill the tea. I'm going to let you guys get to know the new girl for yourself. But um, I was trying to be nice and supportive of her uh, because you'll see she's a blogger and I believe in collaborating and synergy. <laughs> and so um, she's relatively new in that space and she didn't really have any clients that she could like show that she was doing blogging for. So they came to me and asked me, if I would, you know, do something with her on television, in scene, and so forth. So I said, sure, you know, um, she can come, she can shoot at my showroom, you know, we can do a collaboration. I gave her clothes she was going to post on um, my collection at one of our fashion events, which didn't end up happening because it got rained out. Um, but then she got with Heavenly and tried to spin it like... I never paid her to post. And I'm like, girl, I didn't even ask you to do that. They asked me if you could film with me at my showroom. Are you kidding me? I I mean, you bar she barely, barely had like, at that time, she barely had like 30,000 followers, you know? And she was like asking some crazy like money. And so I was like, well, we can collaborate and, you know, you can post. I gave her the outfits. I gave her like... I don't know, $800, $900 worth of clothes to, to wear and post. And she didn't even post it. She put it in a story, which, as you know, is gone, like, just like that. And then she tried to come at me and say that I didn't pay her or something like that. And I was like, really? But that was because Heavenly was kind of, like, gassing her up to kind of, like, make it a storyline. Actually, Heavenly and I think Quad, I don't know. Pay her? But I'm looking at her page right now, Miss Anelia Saja, right? That's the new girl. She's not even verified. And um, I don't even see a tab for media <laughs> where she was looking for payments from you. No. Hey, oh, ridiculous. Ridiculous amounts to post. Mm -hmm. like, like, I don't even think Flat yeah. Country pays that kind of much for you to po post. <laughs> I mean, they're in a what was she asking you? 5K? What? what was she asking for? It was like, uh, I think she tried to say it was like six or $700 for a post. Uh, yeah, people have to know who you are first. You have to have a brand. You have to have a following. Yeah. 
I mean, if I got more followers than you and I get more responses to my pictures, I'm going to post on my own page. Or I'm going to call someone that's a fashion girl like Toya and I'm going to have them post. But right. I'm gonna just, I mean, look at her style and look at my designs. They're, they're not really... She she caters to the, um, the stay-at-home mom, you know, that's just kind of, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to be an influencer is what you're saying. In order to get those type, uh, to charge those type of fees, oh. she'll find out pretty soon. You know, it seems like she was being used as a pawn. And the oh, thing of it is, here's another example that you know, there's an opportunity for women to really work together and support each other. I could put you on my pages. I got a clothing line. I got all kinds of relationships. I could have connected you. You could have posted my collection, and it's synergistic it's collaboration but no that doesn't ever seem to like happen when you're talking about reality tv someone's got to spin it and make it drama instead of a positive thing so are there alliances in season eight i would say yes okay. I, would, I mean for the most part i mean the group is good you know we uh we have our ups and downs. We work through it and we keep it moving. Um, there's some friendships that were challenged. There's some makeups. There's some breakups. I mean, you guys are in for a treat this season. Uh, definitely going to keep you entertained with your popcorn, sipping your tea every episode. Oh, I can't wait. Married to Medicine always delivers, um, even though the cast is a little different this season. Now, girl, I got to ask you about this. The explosive Married to Medicine trailer. We saw Dr. Scott and Contessa, their marriage is falling apart. Mm -hmm. Now, on my channel, I had spilled some tea because, you know, like I said, I got my eyes and ears down in Atlanta. And I was being told that he was having an affair. And the baby outs it. Can you comment on that? I know you can't give too much away. But what can you say about that? Well, I can't give too much away, but I can tell you that the trailer does give you a good glimpse of what this season is going to be like with Scott and Contessa. And I don't think it's any surprise to many viewers. I mean, they've been really having some challenges the last couple of seasons. I think maybe this season it just reaches an all-time bowling point. Oh, okay. All right. All right. We're going to have... Teacups, you're going to have to wait and see what happens. But again, I've spilled that tea. You nope. Know? Drop the link to that video down in the description box. Let's well, let me on. just say, I do love Contessa. She really is. She's a real, she's real. I like her. I like her a lot. I mean, this is really our first season filming together because she came on after I left. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do like Contessa. Okay, good. Hopefully we get to see um, more of her, a softer side to her in, in season eight. I'm looking forward to it. I'm here for it. Moving on, because you are in Atlanta, and in your city, there's been a lot of headlines coming out of Atlanta, specifically T.I. and Tiny, and their allegations that they're drugging and forcing women to have sex. What are your thoughts about that? And also, too, Candy Burris, who's a Real Housewives of Atlanta star, has been tied to this. Share your thoughts on that. I don't know. I don't, mm. you know, you can't believe everything you hear. I, I, I mean, what people do in their bedroom is like their business, but I don't think anybody has kept it a secret that they like to, you know, they like to have multiple partners. I don't think, I think they've been very open about that. All of them. From dungeon parties to all of that, you know, I mean that, that they're not they're not hiding that fact. Um, I, I hope everything that people are saying is not the case, but you know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I think everything that's done in the dark eventually comes to light. Amen. And, uh, Amen. I will say that no matter who you are. Karma is not nice, and if you do wrong to people, it'll come back. I'm not saying that any of them have done wrong, because I don't really know the truth of 
you know, what is really going on there. I see it in the news, but again, I see stuff in the news all the time. I see stuff on the internet about me that I know is not true. So, you know, I just have to like take it with a grain of salt. But I do think that the one thing we could probably all know is that they are sexually adventurous. We definitely know that. We definitely know that they are adventurous from the things that we're hearing about dungeons and various partners and NDAs and all these kind of things. I mean, it's all out there. Uh, Lisa Nicole, you are just such a pleasure. Uh, what businesses did you do you have going on right now that you would like to discuss before we wrap things up? Oh, wow. Well, um, I already told you about Lisa Nicole collection. Come see me. Um, we're going to be doing a lot around um, virtual fashion shows and respect of what's happening with the pandemic um private client appointments again i just love making women feel fabulous so come visit and check us out um i also have a platform called boss and boss stands for believer of supernatural success and i do believe um in helping people achieve success and getting to their financial goals and dreams i'm very passionate about that and i believe if someone can do a thing they can teach a thing so um Boss is a platform that we're going to be launching um, very soon here. And we're also going to have a, oh, <laughs> a OnlyFans boss page. This is kind of funny, right? I got to just tell you this real quick, right? So I saw that Monique had an OnlyFans page. So I was like, oh, what a great way to put content out there mm -hmm. for people to, you know, subscribe to. And so I go and I tell my kids, I got an OnlyFans page. And they're like, Oh my mom, get off of that! You know what people do on there. All my friends are gonna think that, and I'm like, really? Is that what that page is? And I went and I immediately deleted the only <laughs> only fans page, right? And then I learned that some people use it for that, and then some people use it for you know a way of distributing content. So you will see me on only fans distributing good, powerful content to help people boss up and go to the next level, and really. The issues that we face in being successful entrepreneurs, the debt, the trials, the tribulations, the drama, the fun, all that. Kind of, it's kind of like a, a pullback to see how you build an empire. Oh, that's fabulous. We need more of those types of uh, information in our community uh, and women of color, right? Telling us how to invest money, how to build a brand. Folks, if you want to learn how to build a brand from an expert, I suggest you sign up for Lisa Nicole's OnlyFans. All right? Yeah, it's going to be fun. And I'm going to be interviewing some of my good friends that are really at the top of their game in a lot of different areas, whether it's real estate, whether it's financial investing, whether it's fashion, stylist, anything associated with just being a fabulous boss woman. Those are the kind of things we're going to talk about on the OnlyFans boss page. So I can't wait to connect with everybody. Thank you so much for welcoming me back. The fans have been amazing. Um, they they made me feel like I was missed, and it gave me a reason to say, you know what, I'm going to go back and have some fun and just, you know, do what I do. And, hey, some people might like it and some people might say it's it's ratchet but at the same time all of us have that other side that if someone pushes you you'll go to absolutely listen the fans can't wait to see you we can't wait for the season to start season eight premieres march 7th so